Right, tonight we've got both leaders in Sydney busily preparing, I'd expect a the Labor leader in particular, for the third and final leaders debate later tonight on Channel 7. So let's check in with our two travelling reporters in Sydney also, Andrew Crothers with the Prime Minister and Trudy McIntosh with the opposition leader. Well, Trudy, yet again, another day dominated by gaffes or more from Anthony Albanese. This one, of course, on the wage rise issue. Interestingly, though, it looks like he was in one seat only today, the seat of North Sydney, held mm. at this point in time by the Liberal Trent Zimmerman. Then he shot up shop and he hasn't seemed to do any more media today. With a week and a bit to go, that astounds me. What about you? We do know, Peter, the pace of the campaign has been in the spotlight since Anthony Albanese returned from COVID isolation in particular. The pace is very different than that of what we see of Scott Morrison. Clearly, there's a calculation on the Labor side that it doesn't matter, that it's about the... doesn't matter how many jobs you do a day. If people have already decided, for example, that they don't like Scott Morrison, any additional picture opportunities you do in the day in Sydney, what does that really matter? Look, this is the final day of leaders' debates in this campaign. They won't need to do much more preparation, you'd have to think now, that the third and final debate will be done as of tonight. I know the pace will be picking up as we've just got more scheduled travel on the cards. There is a Labor uh, rally being held this Sunday in Brisbane. He's then got to make his way to Perth by Tuesday, where there's a function and a lunch. By the Wednesday, he has to be back in Canberra. He's agreed to do the National Press Club. So by the very nature, it has to pick up. But you would have to imagine, Peter, they'd want to be careful of not having these comparisons to Bill Shorten in 2019, where he was seen to essentially be too complacent and too cocky right at the end of the election, mm -hmm. putting his feet up or so after lunchtime, that you don't want those comparisons to start creeping in, given where Labor are in the polls, to see that repeat, the comparison, the side-by-side -side with what Bill Shorten was doing in terms of the pace. Yeah, or Trudy, Malcolm Turnbull in 2016, who knocked off at lunchtime, ended up losing 14 seats, barely hanging on. And I go back to 2010 when Tony Abbott was up against Julia Gillard. We were neck and neck going into that last fortnight. Abbott did the, you know, that 48-hour campaign and more, and we took them to a hung parliament. So I think it looks pretty arrogant to start winding up at uh, half past 11, 12 o'clock each day, doesn't it? Well, and I... I've always been um, curious about whether we will see that exact tactic, Peter, from Scott Morrison. They make a lot of the fact that they were only in first gear when I was on the Morrison camp in that initial fortnight. Will they copy Tony Abbott's 48-hour mm. blitz right at the end where at 3am you're standing inside a police station? Interesting optics. Will we see that happen on the Morrison side? I doubt we'll see that on the Albo side, to be frank. Well, I think the Prime Minister is going to throw everything at it right to the wire. Today, of course, Andrea, he was in Warners Bay. That's the Labor seat of Shortland. So that's just below Newcastle, uh, above Sydney. He travelled then down to the Central Coast, then into Sydney. He went to the seat of Robertson, which is a, a seat held by the Liberals there on the Central Coast. He's not mucking around. Uh, what did he do today? Yeah, it has to be said, though, Peter, off the back of what you were just discussing with Trudy, the Scott Morrison campaign has been a much slower pace in the previous days, but most of us suspect partly because of the wedge of the two debates on the Sunday than the Wednesday night, but he'll certainly be picking up the pace as we head into the last stretch of this campaign. But Scott Morrison straight into coal country today. Of course, the big story was the wage rises, as you spoke about. An opportunity for Scott Morrison to really attack his opposition leader, calling him reckless, a, use, a loose unit, someone Australians wouldn't want to have near the till. Now, for the government's part, it didn't nominate a increase that it would like to see, nor will it suggest so to the Fair Work Commission, but it did provide a good opportunity for Scott Morrison to again return to what he wants to talk about, and that's economic management, not just management, but economic understanding. But in saying that, if the polls are anything to go by, that new polling today could show that Scott Morrison might be searching for a new treasurer if he is re-elected because Josh Frydenberg, he is under serious threat of losing his seat to an independent. And it's these sort of teal-backed independents which are targeting those inner city seats, which makes what campaigning in seats like Shortland and Robertson today, those outer suburban regional areas, all the more important because whilst the government has Robinson, it is targeting areas like Shortland, and we do know that the government is trying to pick up those seats to potentially offset any Liberal losses in those inner areas. So, Peter, today there were two announcements. 
$50 million towards helping universities partner with business uh, to develop clean energy technology, as well as a local roads announcement as Scott Morrison searches for his own pathway back to power. All right, uh, Andrew Trudy, thank you. We'll watch the debate tonight. I have no doubt it will be interesting. They've all been pretty interesting, haven't they?